Editor-in-Chief of BNE IntelliNews. He's also the longest serving, second longest, right, Ben? I remember this, the second longest serving foreign correspondent in Russia. So you are certainly the man. Can you just explain one thing for us before we look to the future? Currently, when Ukrainian infrastructure is destroyed, is it being rebuilt at the moment? Yeah, work has already started. Some of the development banks like DBRD, IMF, I mean, they're already on the ground and they're dealing with uh, the most urgent infrastructure, particularly the energy infrastructure. And so much as the Russians have been targeting Ukrainian power stations, the grid substations, and those things are being repaired and, and, and put back into operation very quickly. And so the blackouts that we saw a few months ago, they've stopped entirely. And that attack, that strategy to plunge Ukraine into darkness has failed. And also accommodation, that's another top priority. I mean, so many apartments, um, villages, towns that are being destroyed. <coughs> You've got so many internally displaced de de people that you, you have to build accommodation for them. So, I mean, things like, for example, Butcher, which was, mass uh, was devastated by that fight, um, has been entirely rebuilt. And other individual towns have been fixed, um, you know, put back in, into, into shape. But there's a huge, huge amount of work to do. I mean, Zelensky today at the conference was saying, you know, we've got a decade's worth of building ahead of us and everything needs to be fixed. Absolutely. Do you think we're looking at a situation uh, that followed like the Second World War and the reparations, excuse me, the First World War and the reparations mm -hmm. that Germany had to pay? Because how else can Russia be forced to pay for what it's doing in Ukraine? It has to be defeated. I mean, uh, today in the conference, everybody made it very clear. Blinken said it, Sunak said it, uh, von der Leyen said it, that uh, Russia has perpetrated this violence and it has to pay for it. However, you can't force Russia to pay for it unless you, uh, unless you, um, you can't force it to pay un unless you defeat it. And, and that actually doesn't look that likely. Um, so the issue is turned around this $300 billion of uh, central bank money. But as your correspondent reported, the legal team has been working on that. But um, they've been saying already for a few weeks that they can't see a legal way of seizing it. And I think today we saw a very strong emphasis on getting the private sector in to, um, to, to invest, you know, to come up with what the World Bank says is some $400 billion. However, without this $300 billion of central bank money, $400 billion is a huge ask. In so much as, bear in mind, the Ukrainian economy before the war started was the entire economy was worth only a hundred billion dollars. So I think suddenly we're facing a huge shortfall, and and the EU doesn't really have a plan um, to to get reparations from Russia because they haven't been supplying Ukraine with enough weapons to win the war, just not to lose it. So I don't know. The counteroffensive has started. There's a chance that there's going to be a spectacular success, there's a chance that there's a catastrophic collapse in Russian morale, and then maybe there is a defeat, then maybe Putin is willing to talk about reparations. But personally, I, I don't see it happening. I, I think we're going to end up with a frozen conflict, and that Ukraine is going to be short of money for the next decade to try and build or rebuild as best as it can from whatever money it can find. Briefly, if you don't mind, Ben, you've already touched upon it. Uh, what's your reading of the current situation in terms of the fighting? The, the reports are that there are a few hundred meter gains every other day or so. Well, given the reports that we had running up to the counteroffensive of significant amounts of arms in terms of shells, more HIMAR missiles, uh, the Polish were talking about 500 tanks. Um, New York Times is reporting about special uh, 47th Brigade that had been trained in Germany. We haven't seen any of that on the field. We've seen a few leopards, but, you know, one or two. Um, I think we're still at the stage where they're probing. The Ukrainians are probing the lines. They're looking for a weakness. There's also this shaping going on whereby you attack one part of the line to draw defenses away from another place and create a weakness. And I think we're going to see um, a main attack force when they find a weakness to push through and try and break through the, the lines in a spectacular fashion. But it's going to go on, it could go on for, for months, um, this, this probing, because the fighting is, is intense, but the Ukrainians are not really pushing through the lines. They make breakthroughs here and there, and then they seem to retreat very quickly in order to, you know, spare their men, spare their equipment for a big push that would come later. Ben, we always appreciate your input. Thank you so much. Ben Aris in Berlin.